I found this antique dresser at Goodwill and was absolutely ecstatic because I've never found a dresser of her age in such great condition from Goodwill. Her four caster wheels appeared to be original and they worked beautifully. And her hardware, her hardware is what made me fall in love with her immediately. Now, as you can see, her finish is failing and it will require some sanding. That back panel is only held in place by two screws, so it was easy to unscrew them and remove the panel to make sanding and painting easier. Now, you're not going to believe her transformation by the time I'm done, so if you'd like to see how she turned out, sit back and enjoy. handle was so you can tell that that was the original finish so it's clear to me that someone has tried to stain it or I don't, I don't know what they did I'm hoping that this comes off easily but I wanted to show you this too this hardware is absolutely beautiful and I guess this is what it looked like in the beginning and then it just developed that patina now as usual the first thing I did was remove the hardware and then I cleaned it by vacuuming and using that crud cutter pre-paint cleaner. You spray it on and wipe it off. I started sanding the top with 80 grit because I wanted to see how easy it was to get through the finish. Um, the top came off very easily and what I'm finding to my dismay is that this isn't a high quality wood. It looks like poplar because it has strands of green. And I don't necessarily want to expose this kind of wood when there's so many different striations of color. Do I'd love to leave a part of it raw, either just the legs or the legs and that back panel that goes back here. I don't know, just something, but we'll have to see what it looks like when I, when I sand the rest. So I'm back to sanding. I had to take a break for the week of school. Um, I used an 80 grit pad foam pad to sand off as much as I could off the legs. I do want those legs raw. So I'll continue to work on that. And since I have 80 on my sander, I'm going to go ahead, you can tell I did it here. I'm going to go over the whole thing with the 80 because there is so much of a buildup of this finish the previous owner put on it. I, I mean, you can almost feel it with your finger it dripped and all that. So I'm gonna sand as much of that off as I can. Um, but I'm not gonna be sanding down to raw wood because I don't need it. I'll be painting the rest of the piece other than the legs. If there are no pigtail swirls, I'll go to a 180 on here and maybe stop there before I wipe it off to paint. I'm going to try a brand new paint. I am hoping, fingers crossed, that it truly lives up to its reputation. It's Rethunk Junk. It says no sanding, no priming, no wax. Wouldn't that be amazing if that is true? Because here I have a dresser that I have sanded, but it's down to raw wood in places. All right, so, so real quick. The secretary at my school one morning was asking about my furniture business and she said, have you tried Rethunk Junk yet? Cause she had mentioned it once before. And I said, I haven't, but I will, I will, I will. That very day, I had someone come pick up some cabinet drawers that I had listed on Facebook Marketplace. And she met me at school. Her name is Jamie Morris. She's with Restoration Cabinets here in the Atlanta area. And she said, I'm using these as sample boards for my clients. I have a business where I go in and I restore paint kitchen cabinets. I said, what are you using? And she said, Rethunk Junk. She brought me to her van. She is a distributor. And she handed me a brand new bottle of prep and brand new container of paint and said, give it a try. So I am, I am using a different color because I want something dark for this dresser. So last night I painted one side of this with the other paint that I bought, Rethunk Junk Paint, and I haven't looked at it yet. So you and I can look to see together if it's true you don't need to prime even on raw wood. So Everything I've learned on YouTube and what Jamie was telling me is you want to apply your first coat 
thin. Don't put a lot of paint on the item. You'll end up seeing some areas peek through that didn't get paint. And she said, that's good. You need to get one thin coat on and by the second coat, it'll be looking glorious. And y'all, so far, this looks glorious. Let me even give it a scratch test. It doesn't come off! That is wackadoodle. All right, let me give you a closer view. That looks good. That looks good. Now see, this is what she, everything says not to worry about. Um, just put a thin coat on. You'll see some of that wood popping through, but that's okay for your first coat. This looks amazing. Last night, I used the prep on it because every time I wiped it down with a tack cloth or a damp rag, I kept getting what looked like bleed through on the rag. So I did clean the whole thing with the prep and now I'm ready to finish painting. didn't film me painting the whole top and that's fine you don't need to see all that except I wanted to share with you that I'm finding this paint is drying very quickly now I would imagine that's also because the wood was so thirsty so perhaps when I apply the second coat I won't have that same experience of it drying quickly because now there's a barrier of the first coat on top of the wood the other thing that I'm noticing, and this is not a bad thing, is that it's a little bit harder to wash off my hands. I'm a messy painter. I always end up with paint on my hands. And although it will scrub off with a fingernail brush and some soapy water, it's just a little harder to get it off my skin as opposed to mineral paint, chalk paint, some acrylic paint. And again, that's okay with me because I think that translates into being an amazing adhesion on the furniture that I'm painting. Now, so far I have one coat on the whole thing and I still have paint this high in my container. So maybe one coat was only two ounces, two, three ounces. I went online and did learn it takes about 20 to 30 minutes for the paint to fully dry between coats. So I've waited actually about an hour at this point. I've been running my hand over the surface of the piece and I do feel some roughness here and there. So I've been using a very used 400 grit foam sand pad to lightly smooth out those areas. I'm wiping them down with the tack cloth and then I'll start that second coat. As you see, I am able to do long smoothing strokes since the first coat is now acting as that barrier. Oh, that feels nice. I like it. What's with that striation in the wood? It And it was the same way on the top of the dresser. I, I don't know why, but I'm gonna have to go ahead and paint because I even tried to do a wash here to mute that darker tone unsuccessfully. I don't feel like bleaching it, so I'm just going to paint it. So I do want to distress this piece. I wanted to give it its natural aged look, but I'm not very good at this, so. The two times I've tried distressing furniture before, I didn't like it, I ended up repainting. Um, but I'm gonna give this a try. 
I'm just going to go along the edges where you would naturally see some um, removal of the paint just from use. And um, I'm going to do it. I tried starting with a piece of sandpaper in my hand, but it was very cumbersome. So I've switched my surf prep. I'm using a 220 sheet pad. So let me put on my um, shop vac, turn this on and see if we can do a better job or if I can do a better job just dressing with this. I started sanding the edges, kind of rounding the corner, and then I would close the drawer to make sure it looked natural, open it up and do the other side. There was so much movement, I had Kevin help me with the camera because there was no way I could record it on my own. But as you can see, I'm just sanding, wiping, looking at how it appears and then moving on to the next spot. Now, when I finished with the surf prep, I did take a sand pad in my hand and I did sand by hand the flat surfaces. It was a little risky, but I was very happy with the outcome. proud of myself. I didn't overdo it. I like it with one exception, but as far as distressing goes, I'm very happy. All right, so I've distressed and I like the degree of distressing. However, it doesn't look aged because it's not dark wood underneath. So I am going to glaze this now to get a more aged look and so that this wood exposed will now be darker. It'll look much better. But I am pleased with what I distressed. So let's age it up with some antiquing glaze. All right, so I'm using Rust-Oleum's antiquing glaze and I have some lint-free rags available that I've lightly misted with my mist bottle. So you've seen me do this before. You simply paint on, I prefer a brush. Not everybody uses a brush, but I like a brush. And um, I'm making sure to get into all these crevices as well as where I distressed because ultimately I want those areas to look old, I mean darker and kind of dirty-ish. Um, that's what gives a naturally aged look. So, let's see how this goes. All right. My phone is about to die, and that's what I'm filming on right now, so I'm rushing against the clock. I'm also running out of storage. I gotta go delete some files, guys. I've been filming a lot lately. Okay, so I've applied the glaze. I have my lightly misted rag. I'm just gonna go in one direction. And you see how it's getting caught up in the crevices? That's exactly what I want. It's also aging or darkening up the painted surface as well. And look what it did here. It made that aged spot look much darker. So, ooh, love it, love it. I'm glad I decided to glaze. All right, beautiful. I'm gonna go ahead and do the rest of the drawers. I'm not gonna show you that. Feel like I'm giving a little bit too much away before the reveal at the end. So I'm going to do this off camera. I cannot believe this project went as fast as it did especially considering I almost sold this on Facebook Marketplace as is. I thought, oh, I don't feel like dealing with that. I don't know, I just wasn't inspired by the dresser, but I'm glad um, I decided to go ahead with it because he's, she's coming out beautiful. Now, the Rethunk Junk paint does not require a top coat, but they do suggest you seal the top of tables or dressers or things that will get a lot of traffic. So I am going to go ahead and seal the top. 
I have a little bit of this poly left. I'm gonna go ahead and use it up. It's a matte. I think it's gonna be about the same sheen as the sheen in the Rethunk Junk Paint. And I'm going to go ahead and top coat this part as well so that in the event the sheen changes a little bit, at least these two pieces will be the same. I start in the center as I always do and go off the edge. And then smooth it out in one stroke and then leave it alone. You know me, I tend to want to keep working it. And that's when you have a problem with top coats not having the smooth texture that you want because you've been fiddling with it after it started to dry. Oops. Okay. Don't worry about seeing spots that you've missed because if you've missed them, you'll get it the second time around. I've got a little bit. I put the hardware in my half water, half vinegar, boiled it, and it, some of those areas still came out looking a little dull. So I have some Dixie Belle gilding wax in gold, but you can also use rub and buff, which is available at your local craft store. And I used both a brush and my fingertip to apply it to the hardware. Now with Dixie Belle's gilding wax, I do believe the instructions said to let it sit for about an hour and then come back with a buffing rag. You would be surprised at how beautiful this hardware comes out. Now, if you have enjoyed the content of this video as much as I have enjoyed the way this dresser turned out, then go ahead and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already and leave any constructive comments or questions below because I do enjoy reading and responding to every single one.